yesterday, Special Counsel Jack Smith had to move to dismiss the January 6th stuff and classified documents cases. He still insists that he built a strong case against on both fronts, but cites that the DOJ rule says that a sitting president cannot be prosecuted. Yeah. Now, you know who continues to deny all charges. <laughs> And the dismissal comes shy of about four years since the Capitol insurrection. So after all that time and money, are we going to get a rebate? <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting any money back? <laughs> OK, well. Nothing. What do you think of it? It kind of shows you there's no such thing as karma, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> it's like. It's like the Easter Bunny and, and affordable housing. It doesn't exist. I mean, I feel like. Eventually, I think we will, we will get him out. But it's going to take a while. And, and let's hope that there's not too much damage that he does. And so if you think about what happened in the, in the past, how long is it since Election Day? Uh, it's been about two, three. It's been about three weeks. About I think. two years. It feels, <laughs> like, it feels like a decade, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, the idea that uh, Kamala Harris says to American people, I'm going to help you buy a house. That did not resonate as much as they're eating cats and dogs in Ohio. I mean, it's weird, isn't it? We're in a weird sort of state right now. But I feel like, um, I, I also think, even though everybody's been talking about how awful these picks are for the uh, cabinet, I feel like some of the Republicans in Congress are going to have to step up, especially when you have somebody like Robert Kennedy Jr. You sent me a thing the other day that said that dengue fever yes. is on the rise, OK? Yeah. I don't think these Republicans want to get dengue fever. <laughs> I don't think that they want to get COVID. I don't think that they want their kids to not get the polio shot. So when it comes right down to them, maybe they will step up because it will affect them. Surprisingly, yeah. you're kind of making the point I was going to at the end there. So um, d January 6th was disqualifying for me, um, for Donald Trump. I stand by everything I said about the events of that day and that I said in the four years since. Um, I, I don't think that somebody who engaged that way is somebody who should be in office. Yeah. But I did see over the last few uh, four years, but really the last two years leading up to the election, so many voters, it was just in the rearview mirror. It wasn't that they were comfortable with it. They didn't like it. A lot of people who vote for Trump don't even like Donald Trump and the way he behaves. But what they kept saying is the status quo is, is just unsustainable. It's, it kept going back to the cost of living, the cost of living, which Hakeem Jeffries said when he was on our show was the number one driving factor in the election. And there was this ABC News poll, and I know we don't love the polls, but it was uh, right before Election Day saying that, only 26% of Americans liked the direction the country was going. Now, I get you could say, OK, but do you think Trump is the answer? Who is the answer? But when people feel like in my day-to-day -day life, I struggle to make ends meet, it is too hard, I just can't get by, they're going to vote for what they see as change. And, and the point where I agree with you is that I don't think most people who voted for Trump were like, well, I'm off to vote for mass deportations and RFK right. running HHS, even though he said he was going to do those things. It was the cost of living is too damn high and I just need a break. Well, we knew this was going to come, the dismissal of this, so it's not surprising at all. This one hits for me because the number <laughs> one thing that bothered me and was not only it was disqualifying before that, but I feel mm -hmm. like when you talk about January 6th and denying election results, a lot of people can get on board with that sentiment from both sides and mm -hmm. say, maybe they don't in public, but they do say that wasn't OK. This was huge for me. I, and I look back and it's very personal. I was a government major all the way through college. Mm -hmm. I remember going to D.C. the first time and the images, although I'm not comparing this to the terrorist attack on 9-11, Anyone that watches those clips can go back to that day and they have a visceral response. When I see the videos of January 6th, it is just like it happened yesterday for me. It is mm -hmm. jarring. I can't believe it was the United States. I can't, there's a thousand things I can't believe. So on that day, there was universal outrage. There were some leading Republicans, mm -hmm. including Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell that came out and said, this is bad. Strangely, it was so uh, convoluted from that point on, though, because the statistics of how many Republicans said January 6th was bad uh, went from 21, or sorry, was okay. 21% approved of January 6th. By 2024, 30% approved. Wow. In 2021, 29% of the voters said that there was fraud in the election or that it, that it was le not legitimate. In 2023, 36 believed. Mm. It's strange how it was, it was carried through, even with January 6th and the committee and all the evidence that it was somehow weaponized by the right to become a, eh, just, you know, it's a Tuesday. So the irony for me is that this is the democracy and election that Trump had tried to subvert 
the very de democracy that is allowing him to get away with it mm -hmm. by yeah. being That's voted ironic. back in office. Yeah, yes. very ironic. Well, yeah. And, you know, listen, that, that, that was always the plan. I firmly believe that the reason that he was running again to be president was partially because he wants to sort of milk money out of, out of the government, which is what he did the first time. He was running to stay out of jail. That's, that's, right. what, he, that's what he was doing, um, if we're being honest, okay? And it works. Um, and, but, it works. but let me say, the, the other thing I want to say is, you know, a lot of people are, are blaming Merrick Garland and saying, why did he take so long? And they're blaming the Department of Justice. Why did they take so long? As an alum of the Department of Justice, I want to make it clear that these cases generally take between two and four years to prosecute. I know that sounds crazy, but think about how many witnesses, including mm -hmm. yourself, who testified in front of that House committee, 1,000. Yeah. When you are a prosecutor like Jack Smith and receive that case, you now have to re-interview those witnesses. Mm -hmm. You're not going to just take the paperwork and say, OK, Alyssa said mm -hmm. this, so that's fine. You've got to do the work yourself. So between the House committee report being released, that was in 2022, they were gearing up against all of this pressure from the other side, appeals, uh, motions, legal practice. So what can Jack Smith practice. do now? He, well, now what he has done is yeah. he's withdrawn the cases the judge has said they are withdrawn without prejudice. What that means is you can bring them again. But the problem is, because he's the sitting president, you can't continue the prosecution, and the statute of limitations will likely run out mm. when he's done. Mm. So he did what he, he wanted to do. But the last final point I'll make, you know, I know that people are trying to, most people are saying, well, this was a kitchen table issue. This was about the cost of eggs. Donald Trump never talked about the cost of eggs. He tried to commit a sex act on a microphone. <laughs> he talked about, you know, p pets being eaten. Yeah. But when the exit polls were taken, the 92% of black women that voted uh, for the vice president said that the number one issue for them was January 6th and the fall of democracy. Yeah. So there were some voters that felt that that was very, very important. And if I could respond, because I do think that's a, that's a valid point. Donald Trump was never on message this election. We talked about it constantly. But he still won because he had ads that were on message, that were being blasted all over TV. So people were still hearing it. Here's how he's going to bring down the cost of living. Here's what he's going to do for you. So we're all thinking, like, oh, he's talking about cats and dogs and crazy stuff. But a lot of voters who aren't tuning into the day-to-day -day news are seeing these targeted ads that are reaching them fear, where they fear are. Fear-mongering well, ads. It's about some trans are, people. And, about, and some are a lot of the majority of his uh, were Alyssa, about the A lot of scapegoating. And every autocrat or throughout history has found a scapegoat, and that's what he did. If it, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no way around that. That is true. Um, I don't have anything to say about it. You know, I, I, because it, I, I'm not going to go back and say, oh, we should have, they yeah. should have, if you should have, would have, could have. It didn't happen. Yeah. What I'm waiting for now is I want to see all this heat around, oh, you want to talk about the police who are policing. Because y'all never start, talked about that before. You didn't mention that. You kept saying, oh, this person uh, marched here, or this person did this. There was a lot of, there was a lot of hazarai about a lot of stuff that really didn't have anything to do with what I was interested in. I, I voted for everyone else, because I thought we were all wanted peace for our brothers and sisters. And a democracy. In, in, in this joint. So, you know, other people didn't vote for that. So now, all I can do is wait and see what he does, and that will inform what I do.